Hello and welcome to the Ultimate Health Podcast, episode 135. Jesse Chapp is here with Marnie Wasserman, and we are here each and every week to take your health to the next level. Welcome to the first show of 2017, and this week it is just Marnie and I behind the mic. We don't have a guest. We are here to share with you guys our six pillars of health, and this is version 2.0. For those of you that have went back and listened to all the episodes or been with us since the beginning, you remember back on episode number two, we've done the six pillars of health, but since so much has changed in our healthy routines over the years, we decided to do a new and improved version of this show, and you guys are going to love it. Before we get into the details of today's show, I'm going to address that Ultimate Health Coaching is here. So you guys have probably seen me share this in the Facebook group, as well as if you're following along the Ultimate Health Transformation, as well as on Instagram. So the coaching is here. I am offering both one-on-one and now group coaching. There's been a lot of demand for people to do this as a team. So I'm going to be taking on 10 people to do a group coaching, six weeks of transformation, following the six pillars of health. If this is something that you're interested in, I'd love to hear from you. Just email me at contact at ultimatehealthpodcast.com and title the email group coaching. I'd love to have you on board. This is something new we're offering. We'll probably do it a couple times over the year, but the first time we're doing it, 10 people. Let's see who is going to join us for some group ultimate health coaching. And I just want to throw out there for you guys that don't have our habits app yet, Be sure to go and get a copy, ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash habits, and this app is just fantastic, perfect for the new year, and it goes hand in hand with today's show. All you need to do is put all the things that you want to work on in your healthier routine into the app, and it's going to help remind you, keep you on track, and again, just the perfect complement to everything you want to accomplish in 2017. And I just want to highlight, it's actually been one year since we've launched the Habits app. So a little bit of an anniversary to the Habits app. You guys definitely want to make sure you're getting it. And Android users, this will be coming to you soon. So just stay put and hold out and uh, we'll, we'll get you taken care of. So now I'm going to give a shout out to our show sponsor, Sun Warrior. And it is the new year. I know so many people are thinking about cleansing, detoxifying, getting on track with healthy eating. But the first thing you need to do is go down to the basics. And we do talk about a lot of the basics on today's show, and one of them being water. And how can we upgrade our water? Add some minerals and nutrients to them. So using the Sun Warrior Liquid Light and in conjunction with the Orma Super Greens is a perfect way to hydrate and get some good nourishment out of your water. So depending on the type of water that you're using, this is a great way to upgrade it. So Liquid Light, Orma Super Greens, I like it with the mint. You guys have probably heard me say that before. Get the peppermint and upgrade your water and you guys will just love hydrating every day. It it makes drinking water that much easier. And as a listener of our show, you get 10% off all your Sun Warrior products. Super easy to take advantage. Just go to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash SW. And for listeners in the US and Canada, bundle that order together, spend $100 or more, and you get free shipping. So go and get your Ormus Super Greens and your Liquid Light today. So now I'm going to give a shout out to our other show sponsor, Raw Elements. And today I'm going to feature their sea salt. And they've got a whole line of different sea salts from a company called OGO. That's O-J-I-O. There's fine sea salt, ground sea salt, gray salt. These are wonderful salts. So if you are still using table salt at home, I encourage you as part of your New Year's resolutions and kitchen cleanouts and kitchen makeovers, take out the table salt, replace it with good quality salt. Not only can you add a pinch of sea salt to your water and get some minerals and it's a great way to hydrate with a little bit of sea salt, but you can also use it for all your cooking both sweet and savory. Salt is a big part of a healthy diet. You don't need to use too much. And what's nice is when you have good quality salt, you don't need a lot. So stock up on some salt. I really do suggest getting two or three different variations because you need coarse salt and fine salt depending on what you're making. So get them all, load them up in your cart and make sure you're not using table salt into the new year. And again, as the listener of our show, you get 10% off all your Raw Elements products. This discount is super easy to take advantage of. Just go to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash raw elements. And for listeners in the US and Canada, bundle that order together, spend $100 or more, and you'll get free shipping. So go ahead, hit pause, go and get your sea salt on right now. 
Okay, now getting into some of the highlights from today's Six Pillars 2.0 show. We talk about how you definitely need to invest in a shower filter. We talk about how coffee and tea can lead to dehydration. We talk about the importance of medicinal mushrooms and health-promoting herbs and how to get these into your healthy routine. We talk about how to improve your sleep by addressing all your different senses. And we do talk about how it's also possible to over-exercise, especially if you're already burned out. And I know that that is a lot of us. And we discuss how you can slow down and stop feeling guilty about it. We need to let go of that guilt and honor ourselves and take a step back. And we talk about the importance of spending quality time with the loved ones in our life. So much good stuff that we get into. We're excited for the 2.0 that you guys are about to hear. So let's get right into it. Happy New Year, guys. It's 2017. We're so excited to be doing a show with Jesse and myself. I know you guys have been long awaiting a show for ourselves. And we want to welcome you guys to the new year with this awesome episode. Happy New Year, guys. And yeah, we're so excited to be behind the mic, just the two of us. And we have a great episode lined up for you guys. And if any of you have been listening since the beginning, or I know a lot of our people that find the show later on go all the way back and listen from the beginning and catch up from the very start, which we're so honored and thankful for. So listeners that have been back to episode number two, you will know we did a show on the six pillars of health and... So much has changed since then with our six pillars and our health routines that we decided 2017, what a perfect way to kick things off. We're going to go over our new and improved version 2.0, six pillars of health. Yeah, it's pretty exciting because we've grown so much over the last two years. And since episode number two, we've had so many incredible guests on which have expanded our knowledge shifted our perspectives, and we are excited to bring this information back to you with a lot of upgrades, some of the same things that we talked about before with maybe a new twist on it. So you guys are really in for a treat today. So to go over the six pillars to kick things off, they are food and nutrition, water and hydration. Then we move into sleep, exercise, mental health and well-being, and the last one is community and social. So we're going to take our time dig into each one of these, and just give you guys a full perspective on each of these pillars. So to kick things off, we're going to talk about water and hydration. And water is just so key for our overall health. We are made up of 60 to 80% water. And when it comes to hydrating, quality matters. So when you think about water, the best way to go about it is to look at it like a continuum. And on one aspect, you have tap water that being the least optimal choice. And then moving up from there, we move into things like reverse osmosis and distilled water. Next, going up the chain, we get into store-bought spring water and glass. And then right at the top, the level Marty and I strive for, and a lot of times we're consuming this amazing water, is living spring water that we've gone out and harvested ourselves. Yeah, and that's something super fun. I remember back in episode number two when we talked about spring water, we talked about how just a month before that was our first time harvesting the spring water. And now it's become a very regular part of our routine. So yes, we go out of our way to go and get spring water. We make it an adventure and it's something fun. And luckily we do have a spring within 45 minutes of where we live. And that might sound crazy to some of you guys that you're going out of your way to get water, but it's totally worth it. You know, Goji loves it. We love it. We use it for the base of our smoothies. We use it for elixirs. We use it for, you know, whatever we're doing at home that requires water, whether it's a base of a soup. So it makes all the difference. Of course, you don't have to go out of your way to get it. There are some other areas in between that you can access water from, and Jesse's going to get into those. Yeah, so the other type of water Marnie and I are consuming on a regular basis is reverse osmosis. And this is a filtered water. And the problem with this one is that at the end, after the filtration, there's really nothing left in the water and it's considered a dead water. So luckily, there's some things that we can talk about here that you can do to reactivate, remineralize that water, such as putting a pinch of sea salt back in it. Or if you're going to be sipping on the water, a great way to add some flavor and again to get some minerals and to recharge that water is putting a squeeze of lemon in the water or you can put a squeeze really of any of your favorite fruits in there. 
And something else I like to do is add in a scoop of Ormus Super Greens. So the Sun Warrior Super Greens, you can just put a scoop of that in, whether mint or plain, shake that up in your water bottle. So for people who really complain that they don't like the taste of just water, this is a great way to add some flavor to it. And more importantly, to get some minerals and nutrients back in your water. So some of the reasons you really want to avoid tap water It's going to depend on the area where you live, and you can look it up online and find out what is being used in your tap water in your area. But there's often things like fluoride, chlorine, contaminants from old pipes, even pharmaceutical drugs can end up in your tap water that you're consuming. And you got to do the best you can, guys. You know, we understand that when you're traveling or out at a restaurant, there's times where we don't have those choices. Do the best you can. But we're talking about your day to day water at home when you have that choice to make when you're going to, you know, fill up your your pitcher of water at home or you're going to buy a bottle of water. You can make better choices. And just to give you guys kind of an overview of where Marnie and I are at, we like to live day to day our drinking water and the water we're using for teas off the living spring water we've gathered. But we like to use reverse osmosis when it comes to soups and stews, when you're going to be using bigger amounts of water, especially if we're getting low on our supply. We like to just use the RO water in those cases. And when we're traveling, it can be hard to bring water along or find high quality water when we get to our destination. So we like to often go to Whole Foods or another health-oriented grocery store and pick up spring water that is in glass. So Mountain Valley makes one that we really like. And I think there's a couple other brands out there that are doing some good stuff. But that's kind of where Marnie and I are at right now with our water consumption. So the other area you need to really be concerned about when it comes to water quality is the water you're showering in. So... Luckily, there's some great brands out there making shower filters that are super easy to screw on. Just unscrew your current shower head and put this on either in between your shower head and where it comes out of the wall, or sometimes they have a new shower head right built in. But there's some great brands such as Sprite, Omica Organics makes one, and right now, Santivia is the one Marnie and I are using. And these are super easy to install, and typically they're good for about four to six months. So they're going to make sure you're removing a lot of those contaminants, and you're going to really, really appreciate the difference when you're showering. And Santivia also makes countertop water filters as well. So if you are exposed to tap water at home, you don't want to make the investment into a reverse osmosis system because they can be expensive. You can get something on your countertop. So Santivia And the Berkey water system are two amazing options that give you incredible water at home. So depending on how big you want to go or how fancy you want to go, if you look on either of those websites, and we'll have these linked up in our show notes, you can see that there are different options for home use and you can still have really high quality water. So there's a wonderful website out there called findaspring.com. And what that allows is people when they're out and about and they find a spring in their location... They can use this website and actually map it on a map so others can go out and find the spring afterwards and consume this great water. So often Marnie and I, when we go traveling, we'll look up in that area and see if there's any springs. Obviously, where you're living, you're going to want to see what's around your area. And people, it's built by the people. People keep adding pictures and information about the spring. And this website over time is really built up and it's a fantastic resource. It's helped us many times. It even sometimes has some videos in there. So we were at a spring a couple years ago and we knew the approximate area where it was, but we could not find it. And luckily there was a YouTube video or a video embedded in there that we could watch and the guy walked us through the video that we could see. We knew where we were in real time and we were able to find the exact spring because it was just this little pipe in between some rocks off the road. So anyways, really interesting stuff. It makes it, as I said, an adventure to go off and do this. So definitely check that out and share with us. You know, if you guys are following along on social media, we want to see where the springs are around the world that you guys are finding. And not all spring water is safe for consumption. So make sure somebody else or you're going in there and testing to make sure it's pure and and ready for consumption. So while we're talking about hydration, I want to touch on coffee and tea. And these beverages can be part of your healthy routine. But you obviously want to make sure you're moderating how much you're consuming And if there's caffeine in the tea or coffee, most coffee has caffeine, you want to make sure you're aware that that's a diuretic and it's actually going to cause you to urinate 
and it's going to dehydrate you throughout the day. So most of us are walking around chronically dehydrated as it is. So you definitely want to be aware and you want to make sure you're drinking tons of water throughout the day, especially if you're getting into the coffee and the caffeinated teas. Yeah, guys, you do not want to wait until your body gets to a point where you're so thirsty. We're often not aware that a lot of the ailments and problems that we're having day to day are because we are just so thirsty. So make sure your water levels are tapped up. And this can take some time to really get used to what the right amount of liquid is for you. But just make sure you have a glass water bottle or stainless steel water bottle with you in hand throughout the day so you have that emergency water there. But you should also just be sipping on it throughout the day and definitely in between meals. I'm sure we've talked about this on previous shows that drinking a lot of water with your meal is really bad for digestion. So just make sure that you're having room temperature liquid, if not warm teas. Right now it's cold here in Canada, so warm beverages are really awesome. So having warming drinks throughout the day and in between meals, because when you're guzzling water, and especially cold water or ice water, which a lot of people do with your meal, it inhibits digestion. It stops your enzymes in your stomach from doing what they need to do, and your food just sits there, and that can lead to gas and bloating and discomfort. So little tip, Make sure you're hydrating in between to allow your body to absorb it, utilize it, and you can start to feel hydrated. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up the stainless steel or glass water bottle because that in and of itself is just such a profound step in the right direction. Having that with you throughout the day, having that constant reminder to just be sipping and sipping and not get to the end of the day, say after dinner, and realize you haven't drank any water that day and you're guzzling it back before bed to make up for lost time. We all know what that can lead to, having to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, disrupting our sleep. So I really like that idea. If you don't have one already, make sure you get a quality water bottle and carry that with you throughout the day and just make sure you're sipping on it and keeping hydrated. And the problem with these water bottles is, uh, Jesse and I know, we've collected and accumulated so many of them over the years because there's always a better one. There's always something else coming out. The newest one, the coolest one. So unfortunately, we have discarded and recycled quite a few over the years, but we have settled on stainless steel and glass being the best quality. And again, we just try and hold on to one because we are minimizing as well too. So we don't need multiple versions of each or multiple colors. And I know I'm definitely guilty of that. So just get yourself one good water bottle and maybe something else that also is insulated for hot teas and you're set. And just wrapping up this pillar on hydration here, last thing I want to mention, a lot of people ask, how much water should I be drinking in a day? And this is going to vary person to person, and it's going to depend on your location, how hot it is, how much exercising you're doing. But a general rule of thumb to start with and then experiment from there is to take your weight in pounds, divide that by two, and drink that many ounces of water throughout the day. So again, just a baseline to get you out there and and get you started. The next pillar is nutrition. So this is real food, high quality, whole food nutrition. And Jesse and I have always been advocates of this. We were two years ago. We still are now. Yes, things have changed a little bit over the years. We've, you know, shifted a little bit of our, our focus and the balance on our plate. But at the end of the day, it still comes down to high quality food, mostly greens, making sure our food is unprocessed, as little packaging as possible. And I remember we talked about this before, the difference between processed and packaged foods. A lot of healthy foods do come in packages, but it's the processed foods that we're really trying to watch out for. How far away has that food been taken from its natural state? So we want to go back to nature eat real quality food, and cook more at home. This is what it's all about. This is how you have the most control over what you're consuming is to cook at home. And even better is to be able to actually go and buy your own ingredients. So, you know, go to the grocery store, the farmer's market, which we're big fans of, and buying the raw material so you can put together epic and delicious meals at home. Yeah, I think a great way to summarize this is by our friend who's been on the show, Sean Croxton, where he says JERF, which stands for Just Eat Real Food. So again, as these small nuances change with our diet over the years, that is always going to be at the core. We're all about quality and uh, we're excited to catch you guys up a little bit on what we've been changing up in our diet. Yeah, we've been getting this question quite a bit because we've had a lot of 
controversy, you know, a lot of opposing views on nutrition over the years with lots of amazing guests with their value brought forward with their nutrition perspective. And again, if you were to strip it all away, it does come down to good quality whole foods. But there has been, you know, more of an emphasis as of lately, more on high quality animal protein, higher fat. And Jesse and I are big fans of good quality fats. So just to make sure that you guys are all clear, even though we've had some guests on talking about no fat, no oil. Eh, that's not where Jesse and I are at, and that's not what we believe is the foundation for the average person, maybe someone who does have heart disease or is looking to to bring their body back into balance after a condition. But for day-to-day eating, what we're advocates of is high fat. And if you haven't listened to our episode, The Lowdown on High Fats, go back and listen to that. You'll get more perspective on where we're at with that. So fat is a big part of our diet right now. I have personally cut down significantly on the amount of grains and beans that I was consuming more when I was eating more of a vegetarian plant-based diet. So now my diet is still very much plant-based, greens-based, shall I say, or vegetable-based, but the grains and the beans have subsided for me. And that really has come down to digestion, health, inflammation. So I'm in the midst right now of making some huge, drastic changes in my diet, and I'm starting to see the results for the better You know, it took me about seven years to really realize what was the best strategy for my body. I haven't come to the full conclusion yet, but I'm working through it. And as you guys know, it is a journey. You have to kind of keep tweaking, seeing what feels right. But again, finding that ratio, that balance for you and making sure that greens are a part of it, fats a part of it, high quality protein and some good carbohydrates, which we love. I know Jesse and I are on this sweet potato kick and squash kick as of late. The root veggies are very much in season. So Jesse's getting spoiled pretty much on a nightly basis by me making things like spaghetti squash or roasted root veggies or uh, what's your favorite one right now? What's your favorite version that I'm making? Yeah, I'm really digging the sweet potatoes. Anything that has sweet potato in it is just so, so good and I'm so drawn to right now. Well, we did a mash the other day which had sweet potato and coconut oil in it, guys. This is the most winning combination. It was like, it was for a savory dish, but when you put it into a bowl and have it like a breakfast, so good. Anyways, I could go on for hours on food and on sweet potatoes, but we'll scale it back. I would say one really important point to be made here is that when you're talking about veg on your plate, you want to have a wide array of different colors. So you want to see the rainbow there. And if you can do this each and every meal, even better. But if not throughout the day, you really want to make sure you're getting all that different colored veg. And the dominant veg, as I've already said, being green. And guys, Get familiar with your greens. Go different. Don't just get stuck on the broccoli or the spinach. Go for the dandelion. Go for the collards, the shard. My homework to you listening to this podcast today is to go and find a new green, maybe for the next couple of months into the new year. I want you to try on some new greens, something you've looked at, you've peeked at, maybe kind of like winced at. Now you're going to pick that up at the farmer's market or the grocery store and you're going to find a way to cook that up. Yes, rotate those greens. And for quite a while now, my two favorite greens have been baby arugula and baby kale. These have taken me some time to adapt to and and really respect that more bitter flavor. But if you're still a little bit timid around the more bitter greens, start slow, do some salad combos, maybe mix it with some leaf lettuce or some romaine lettuce. And over time, your palate will shift and I'm sure you will find a love for these as well. So one area I want to touch back on that Marnie mentioned early on when we opened up this pillar is talking about processed foods versus packaged foods. I just want to unpack this a little bit and explain a little bit further to you guys what we mean by this. So typically processed foods are things that are found, say, in the freezer at the grocery store, things that are packaged and they they have terrible oils in them and often they have a lot of bad salt and and they're just really built to stand the test of time and and really just not go bad. And we want to make a proper distinction here because Marnie and I in our day-to-day healthy living, we really like to include a lot of packaged foods. I shouldn't say a lot, but a decent amount, especially when we get into things like making elixirs and smoothies because in the health world these days, we're so lucky a lot of these superfoods have been dried out and they've been powdered 
and we can get great stuff from all around the world in an organic, raw form and then include these beautiful foods day to day in our healthy routine. So just want to make that distinction there. Processed foods, yes, those are bad. You want to avoid those at all costs. But when it comes to packaged foods, there are a lot of great ones in health food stores these days. So now I want to jump into another category of foods that Marnie and I like to consume on a daily basis. Actually, every single meal we like to try and get some of these in, and that is fermented foods. And Marnie is actually the author of Fermenting for Dummies, and she is just such an expert on the topic. So Marnie, tell us why we need to include these on a regular basis. Well, I look at fermented foods like superfoods. This is that extra little bit that you can be doing every day to upgrade your meal and upgrade your health. So whether you are buying some fermented foods or making them at home, which I definitely recommend, but that might be, you know, a little bit down the line for some of you, this is a way to get raw, unpasteurized, living, probiotic-rich, gut-healing food into your body. So whether it's in the form of sauerkraut or water kefir. Those are two of my faves. It could be coconut yogurt or real yogurt. It could be kombucha. You have to be careful with that. You want to make sure that it's a homemade brew as opposed to store-bought or limit your store-bought versions. And there's there's so much. Really, you can ferment anything, and that's the beauty of it because fermenting something is really just a form of food preservation with a way of allowing the organisms in that food to come to life. And recently, we had Sandor Katz on the podcast, which was awesome because he was definitely my inspiration when I wrote the book, Fermenting for Dummies. And I highly recommend if you have not gone back and listened to that episode, do so, especially if fermenting at home is a bit intimidating for you. If you're not sure on what fermented foods are, this goes into big, big detail for you. But we are big fans right now. Jess and I are just taking, you know, heaps of sauerkraut because I'm always making a batch. I always have some on hand. We are putting a scoop or a couple forkfuls with our meal, with our lunch. We are, we just had the pleasure of being in Windsor with Jesse's family over the holidays. And I've turned Jesse's mom into a fermenting kombucha monster. She's amazing. She makes weekly batches of kombucha which tastes amazing. And then she does a second ferment, which you'll learn more about if you listen to Sandor, where she adds some pomegranate juice, 100% unsweetened cranberry juice or pomegranate juice or another kind of not so sweet tart juice and puts it in beer bottles so that like old beer bottles with a cap on it. And that way it seals it and makes it extra bubbly. And then we have these amazing drinks to drink all week. So I was totally spoiled last week with homebrewed kombucha. And it it makes it such a treat to have this on the regular. So those are really easy ways to get ferments in. And the benefit, as I mentioned a little bit, is the gut health benefit. And that is the key. This is where everything is pointing to right now. You know, we could strip away all these pillars right now, it comes back to the gut. You need to get that gut in shape and fermented foods are a fast track way there. So probiotics are wonderful. You can still take them, but nothing is going to get that amount of bacteria in the most easy to absorb form as a homemade fermented version. And speaking of probiotics, I just want to quickly touch upon supplementation before we leave this food and nutrition pillar. And I just want to mention four supplements that each and every one of us should at least consider and our health could probably benefit from. And one of those is probiotics. So as Marnie was just talking about, all kinds of great fermented foods. And if you're having those on a regular basis, arguably you might not need a probiotic, but I like to take one just in case. And another supplement you want to consider is a quality multivitamin, just to make sure you're covering all those vitamins and minerals, things that you might not be getting on a regular basis through your diet, just as kind of an insurance there. Vitamin D, oh so critical, and especially being in northern climates like we are here in Toronto this time of year, we want to make sure we're getting our vitamin D level tested, and if we're not at optimal levels, we want to be supplementing. Super easy to do. And everybody should definitely have a test done to see where they're at. And the last one is a quality fish oil to make sure you're getting those omega-3s and just so great for brain health, anti-inflammatory, omega-3s, so important for each and every one of us. 
And if you're not into a fish oil, there is plant-based oils. Yes, they may not be as potent or as effective, but they're still wonderful. I'm currently taking a NutriVeg oil right now and, and I love it. So even though I am eating fish, I just prefer not to take fish oil. So I'm taking a, a veggie-based one. So if there are vegan listeners, there are options for you. And before we totally move away from this category, a couple other areas I want to add in is getting in some more wild foods, really looking into how you can get your hands on wild foods. This is different than organic foods. These are foods that are wild in nature. You know, this is things like if you have the chance to go foraging in the summer and pulling a berry off of a tree. These are wild foods. Someone may not have marked that tree as organic. There may not be any pesticides on it. It is wildly grown. And so if we can get our hands on them a little bit harder, you have to go out of your way, kind of like the spring water thing. So try and find some wild foods and get them in. And the other area is sea vegetables. I feel like sea vegetables are so under discussed. Really, people don't know about the health benefits of them. A lot of people turn up their face because they think that they're going to taste off or too fishy or too strong. Well, depends on how you prepare them. But the benefits of adding sea vegetables into your meals is profound. You are getting all the trace minerals and nutrients. You're getting loads of iodine. So people who do have low thyroid function or other issues with their body um, in the thyroid realm, The amount of iodine and nutrients that you can get from sea veggies is amazing and they taste great. So you can add them into anything from a miso soup to a stir fry to a sandwich. If you don't like the taste at all, there are ways you can get them in a little shaker bottle and sprinkle them into your foods. So make sea vegetables, wild foods, fermented foods, uh, you know, different superfoods. Add those condiments in. I like to look at those as the condiments. Those are my version of condiments. Ways to upgrade your meals in small amounts that go a long way. So pack that on top of good quality nutrition. It's not about labels, guys. It's not about keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian. It's about quality food. Our good friend, Sam Gladish, who's been on the show, she likes to use the term qualitarian and we love that. And that's what Jesse and I are all about as well. I just want to quickly mention we've dropped and we're going to continue to drop a lot of names of our previous guests and and directing you guys to these shows. And just so you know, you're going to be able to go to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash 135 And we're going to have show notes there with links to all these previous guests. So you guys don't have to jot anything down. We're going to have a nice show summary there as well. So go and check those out. And one last thing I'm going to mention before we leave this category. This seems to be kind of a theme here. We just keep thinking of new things to add in. But I want to talk about adding herbs, potent herbs to your diet. Things like medicinal mushrooms so like reishi and chaga mushroom and making teas with these and including them in your routine and there's so many ways you can include them you can just sip on them as teas you can use them as bases and elixirs marnie and i are talking about elixirs all the time and we like to have these on maybe an every other day basis right now they're really great this time of year just because they're warm drinks and they're just so warming here through the cold ontario winter so Yeah, make sure you're getting your medicinal mushrooms. And I just want to think of a couple others off the top of my head that we're consuming. Herbs that are just so powerful. And and these things change your health in a way like things like organic celery and tomatoes, fruits and vegetables. They just don't have the same impact on the body. So I really think this category is neglected by a lot of people. Luckily, companies like Four Sigmatic are out there and they're making these things so much more accessible and the word is spreading and I hope it continues to spread and I feel it will. But uh, yeah, make sure you're getting these these wonderful herbs from around the world. And another one I'll mention quickly and we'll see if Marnie has any to add to the list is Tulsi. And this is a tea that Marnie and I like to make at night before bed. It's really calming, relaxing, and it's an Ayurvedic herb. And it's just super potent. And both of us, even before we met, had been consuming this one for a long time. Tulsi or holy basil tea. You can use either word. It's it's two different names for the same thing. So just want to make sure people know that these herbs are out there. And you definitely want to even just start with a couple. And they're really going to transform your health. Well, I kind of feel like I want to give you guys a little quick rundown of some awesome herbs right now. So anything from gynostemma tea, which has a whole whack of tonic herbs in there and adaptogenic herbs, of course, turmeric and cinnamon, dandelion root, shilajit, uh, of course, 
cha gun reishi as jesse was talking about the four sigmatic you can get those in so many different forms but four sigmatic makes it super simple and now of course i'm going to point you to a podcast that you have to go and listen to by joy and jay coelho who talk so much about some of these awesome herbs and how to incorporate them not just in elixirs but into your cooking so go check out that episode honestly one of my faves of the year i love it as a foodie of course they talk all food and really fun ways of adding some of these herbs in and they give even more ideas on some of the different herbs that exist out there yeah jay denman and joy colello amazing team and uh, that was just a great episode just to elaborate a little bit too, Marnie mentioned the Gynostema tea. The one she was referring to is the Spring Dragon Longevity Tea. And this is by Dragon Herbs, a fantastic tea that Marnie and I have been drinking for years. And the Gynostema, what they actually do is take the Gynostema leaves and they take, I think it's five other herbs, including goji and Siberian ginseng, all kinds of amazing stuff. They make a paste out of those. And then they soak the gynostema leaves in that paste and come out with this spring dragon tea. And we'll link it up in the show notes. If you haven't tried it, grab a box. This stuff is fantastic. So now I'm going to go into our third pillar on sleep. So we've definitely dove deep into the category of sleep many times on the podcast And we hope you have started to get equipped with some of the tools and tips and ideas on how to make your sleep quality better. And if you haven't, we're going to go over some ideas again and hopefully add some new ideas to the mix so you can get a good quality sleep. And just like water, if we're not getting good quality sleep and we're not making that a priority every night, we are not going to be able to function day to day. Where sleep impacts us is everywhere, everywhere from our emotional well-being to our physical well-being, to our mental well-being, to our weight, to how we function in the world, everything. It comes down to sleep. So for those of you who are taking advantage of your sleep right now and not treating it as this sacred, beautiful thing that needs to happen every night, I really want you to listen closely. Yeah, we've had so many amazing sleep experts on the show, and a few that come to mind right away are Sean Stevenson. He's actually been on the show twice. We've had the pleasure of speaking with Ariana Huffington and Dr. Michael Bruce. So, so much great information from these guys, but Marnie and I are going to take what they've taught us and everything we know about sleep and distill it down into this pillar for you guys. The challenge is, where do we start, Jess? There's so much. I think probably the easiest place to start is with the bedroom. Yeah, you want to make sure you're creating a sleep sanctuary. And this is what Sean Stevenson likes to refer to. And he wrote the book Sleep Smarter. He's really grabbed this niche and and really dove deep and made it his priority with the information that he's sharing with the world. And I think it's so important to make your bedroom into a sanctuary, into a place that you're going to want to go at night and spend that time and and go and spend some time beforehand doing things that are going to help you sleep better, such as reading and and getting cozy and slowing down at the end of the day. So something that we've done in our bedroom is we have a diffuser and we have put some lavender. It's like a, a beautiful mix by Living Libations and Nadine Artemis we've had on the podcast previously. She does beautiful body care stuff. So we have one of her essential oils that we put into a diffuser. So that sets up the smell in the bedroom. So we're, we're really kind of tackling all the senses. So you get the smell, change your air to something that's soothing and relaxing. For sight, we want to go as dark as possible, as black as possible, using blackout blinds, or if you don't want to invest in that, putting a sleep mask on. I, I was using a sleep mask for a little bit, but I, I need to find a better one. It has to be comfortable on your face. It has to be something that you're going to stay asleep in. Jesse's a fan of earplugs, so that's tackling hearing, so taking all that out. And yeah, for lighting in the room when we're just chilling before bed, we have these incredible salt lamps. We have a couple of them in the bedroom, and it just puts out this nice natural glow. And like Marnie said, when we do go to sleep, obviously we're shutting those off and we have blackout blinds over our window. So lighting is so important. Continuing on with the senses, touch is super important and that comes down to your bedding. What are you sleeping on? So having something soft and soothing, bamboo sheets or organic cotton where your skin is touching the sheets, you want that to be super, super comfortable. And as far as taste goes, so two little things when it comes to taste One is you got to stop eating early enough before bed so your body has a chance to digest and you're not going to bed with a 
full stomach. And I know this can be a sticky area if someone is too hungry before bed, that can work against you. So just be mindful as to what you're consuming. Try not to have things that are caffeinated or heavy or salty or spicy. Just be mindful of that. But honestly, when you have an empty stomach or relatively empty stomach, you've given yourself at least two to three hours to digest before you go to sleep, it makes all the difference. And another taste area is having some liquid calm or magnesium, which Jesse and I like to do before bed too, or a soothing tea, like a chamomile tea or a Tulsi tea, as we talked about earlier, really grounding and calming. So those are some tastes that you can kind of think about before you go to bed. So covering all those senses, and there's, of course, always so much more to go into. Yeah, another thing I want to make sure we touch on is room temperature. So when you're going to sleep at night, you want to make sure you're regulating the temperature and dropping it down. And ideally, you want it in the high 60s when we're talking about Fahrenheit. So you want to just be sleeping in a really cool environment, and that's going to help optimize your sleep. And before you're going to bed, you really want to make sure you're when you lead up to that time when you're going to fall asleep, that you're not staring into your phone or your computer and having that artificial light enter your eye. And if you do, that's actually going to negatively impact your melatonin production, which is your sleep hormone, and it regulates your sleepiness and your wakefulness. So you don't want to mess with that. And so best thing to do is make sure you're doing something like reading with a natural light or just talking to your partner or something where you're not having that glow in your eyes. But if you do, there are programs and hacks out there, such as Flux for your computer. So it actually blocks the blue light from entering your eye, and it's going to help stop that melatonin disruption. And there's also something called Night Shift on the iPhone, which is a newer thing that they're including in the iOS software, where you can actually set that to do the same kind of thing. So when it gets to a certain time of day, the blue light's going to stop coming out from your phone, and it's just going to help with your sleep quality. And one other thing that you can be doing before bed, and this is something that Jesse and I are in the routine of, is listening to a meditation. So something that can calm your mind, calm your body, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you want to get into, but it can help calm down the body. I know a lot of people do like to meditate in the morning, and that is fabulous as well. But we find that meditation at night as we ease into sleep, and especially getting a meditation app that is perfect for sleeping. There are ones that are out there, and I know Jesse's definitely going to be linking some of those up in our show notes, that uh, can really help transform and set the mind for, for relaxation and sleep mode. Yeah, we tried a lot of them, and a few that I think are great and you might want to check out are Headspace, 10% Happier, and one called Budify. And for Headspace and 10% Happier, you do get some free trial guided meditations, which are great, uh, but you do have to pay a fee, which is a significant fee to have a monthly subscription to those. The great thing about Budify is you pay a small fee and then you have everything opened up. and, And that app's been one that more and more Marnie and I have gravitated to over time. Last thing I want to mention in the sleep category is a point Dr. Michael Bruce really emphasized, and this can be a real challenge for a lot of people. For quality sleep, it is so important that we are going to bed and waking up at the same time each and every day. And this goes for weekends as well. And that's where the hard part comes in because a lot of times we want to stay up late and have fun with friends and family on the weekends and sleep in, but that will throw off your sleep schedule and Again, if there's one thing you're applying after this, I would say it's going to bed and getting up at the same time each and every morning. And the best part about Dr. Michael Bruce's episode is finding out your sleep animal and who you are and what works for your body or or how you like to function. So this is a really fun episode where Jesse and I got to dig in and find out what makes us thrive and how we need to best go to sleep and wake up. Okay, moving into the next category, which is exercise. And to open up here... I would say the biggest thing for each and every person to do is to go out there and experiment with different things and find out what really resonates for you. For somebody, it might be swimming, somebody it might be walking or jogging. There's so many different forms of exercise that are going to be beneficial to your health. So just go out there and try a bunch of them and settle on a couple that you personally really love. 
one of our early episodes, Jesse and I did it, did a show on making fitness fun because that is so important to us is if we're going to get our body in shape, we may as well have fun doing it and finding that art for your body, that form that makes sense. Just just go and do it. And it doesn't have to be a long time. And we're big advocates these days of spending less time at a higher intensity and and working your body or Some days, actually, we're not working at such a high intensity. We're maybe going for a walk. So for me, my forms of activity that I really like, I I tend to like more the higher intensity, (laughs) more so than Jesse does. But I like things like spinning and using my kettlebell, doing some strength training. So really finding ways to get my body in in shape that don't involve a lot of equipment. So I like using my own body weight. That's really important to me or unless I'm going to do a spin class. A few of my favorites right now are going for long walks, and that's with Marnie and the dog when possible. And I also love yoga, especially kundalini yoga, and that's something I tried for the first time within the last six months, and I want to start doing more of that. And going to the gym for quick sessions. So like Marnie said, we're not always going and and spending hours there. We rarely do that kind of thing. I like to go spend some time on the elliptical machine do some different exercises, resistance training, and get in and out. And for me, the biggest thing is being aware throughout each and every day that I'm moving and not sitting stagnant because with the type of work I do with this podcast and editing and preparing for shows, it's so easy for me to stay seated like a lot of people out there. So I'm just really aware and really trying to move my body throughout the day. Yeah, a couple of our awesome guests like Kelly Starrett, Jill Miller, Katie Bowman, they're big fans of moving many times throughout the day. So you don't always have to be engaging in some kind of exercise. Just moving more makes all the difference. And, you know, Jesse and I also have our core chairs. That allows us when we're sitting to be able to move our body and move our abs. So there's so many different ways to get that motion in. And back to walking, a really fun way to upgrade walking and making it that much more interesting is getting a Fitbit. So we have Fitbits, our friends have Fitbits, we challenge ourselves, and it just forces you to get more steps in. So you might just take an extra flight of stairs or park a little bit farther or just you know, scurry around your house a little bit more just to get those steps in. And you're not even thinking about it while you are because you're in a little bit of a competition. But you can realize how, many, how much more movement you can get in in a day. So a really fun thing to do is to get that Fitbit. And if you find that it's a challenge for you to keep going, so get a Fitbit and it keeps, you, keeps your body moving. Yeah, and depending on your personality type, you might resonate more with doing group fitness classes, things like yoga, group gym classes, Pilates. There's so many ways you can go and connect with other people. Often gyms now will have different group classes. So if you have a membership there, you can do different classes depending on the day. So if you're more of a social person and and you like to interact, consider those options. And if you're someone who likes to be at home and work at at home, luckily there's so many options online, you know, videos and YouTube videos, things that you can follow along. And on your very own phone, you can download an app called 7-Minute Workout, which I know that we've mentioned before. It's great. So for days that Jesse and I are just on the go, we want to get something in, but we don't have a lot of time. We'll just put on that 7-Minute Workout. Sometimes we've done it twice, but even just 7 minutes with this workout, it's, it's pretty intense. It's pretty awesome. So everyone has 7 minutes. Beginning of the day, middle of the day, end of day, All you need really is a chair and the space around you, and you can pretty much do any of the movements or exercises. I want to make sure I'm putting this out there as well, where people can over-exercise. So if you're somebody right now who is maybe burning the candle at both ends, you're not getting enough sleep, you're stressed, maybe you have some adrenal fatigue or exhaustion, you want to respect where you're at right now and not just go and do, say, an all-out spin class or go to the park and do sprints if you're at a point where you're burnt out. So really take the time before you decide what you're going to do for exercise. Assess where you're at and don't push yourself to the point where you're overdoing it because that can have more negative effects than positive. So just be aware of that. Is this your way of speaking at me? (laughs) Because I know I'm guilty of this. (laughs) Well, it depends where you're at. I mean, for some people, those are great. But if you are somebody who is under a lot of stress and, and again, your adrenals are taking a beating right now, I would say that one would be something you would probably not want to be doing. 
It's very hard for my personality type. Like for me, getting in a spin class or doing intense workouts just feels so good. But I'm working on it. This is this is part of my 2017 plan is to to kind of scale back a little bit, still get in my workouts, but maybe in a calmer way. And I also want to throw out there too that your exercises can change with the season. So for somebody who likes biking and they're spinning in the wintertime, consider getting out and actually biking outside when the weather warms up. So yeah, just like through the different seasons, we're consuming different foods. I want people to be aware that you can do different exercises that are more fitting. And the last thing I'm going to throw out for exercise is that consistency is key. Here we are in the new year, so many people starting new workout plans. And unfortunately, a lot of those people aren't going to continue to do them throughout the year. So my recommendation to keep consistent is start out nice and easy, build up, make sure you're doing activities that you're loving. And yeah, if you go out and work out for a couple of weeks and then quit, you're really not going to get a lot of benefit from that. So make sure you're consistent throughout the year. And this is just such a time of year to make that point because again, so many people do unfortunately quit their, their new exercise plans come end of January, beginning of February. And I think the big thing is to get very specific with your goals and your approach, because if it's just so general, like I want to be fit this year, or I want to lose weight, it's just kind of all over the place. So if you're like, you know what, I really want to start doing yoga and I'm going to go maybe three times a week to the yoga studio that's just down the street, like get specific so that it's more manageable, something you can do. And as Jess said earlier, find maybe some friends you can do that with. Maybe that will keep you accountable, keep you motivated. It does make a difference. It really does make a difference to be able to do something with someone else. If you are there to show up, not just for you, but for someone else, you're more likely to get it done. So baby steps, start off the year strong and and get in shape. So now we're gonna get into our fifth pillar, mental health and well-being. So this is all about you. This is about your mindset, your frame of mind. And we've talked a lot about mindset and getting into a good place Again, everything comes from there too. We have to approach our days with intention. And meditation is usually what comes to mind when we talk about this. And we just talked about previously some of the meditation apps that you can access and download, which is a great starting point. Or maybe you want to attend a meditation class. Maybe there's a course or a book that resonates with you or meditation podcast. We've got lots of wonderful meditation experts on our show. So make sure you go back and listen to those as well. But the whole goal is to stop the noise, stop the chatter, stop the background. Easier said than done. But if we have more control over it and there's a way that we can approach our days and our thoughts with a little bit more ease and clarity, we can feel better about our decision making, about our work, our productivity. We can just approach everything a little bit easier. It doesn't have to be 100%, just a little bit better. And when it comes to meditation, I know a lot of people, myself included back in the day, get confused on how to go about doing it. So again, check out one of those few apps that I recommended and it's just really easy and it really explains how to take off and get started. And you can do it in as few as five to 10 minutes a day and it's gonna have a profound impact on your health. So some of the things we're going to get into here are all about self-care and taking care of you. And if you have our Habits app, which I hope you do, we have a whole section on this. And these are ways you can set little reminders for yourself, things that you can engage in daily that make you feel better. And it can be anything from a nap to watching your favorite show to organizing a spa day to going into a sauna we can go on. There's there's so many little ways that you may want to look into of of feeling better. And sometimes we get so caught up in our day-to-day life that we don't even know or we're not even aware of the things that make us happy or put a smile on our face or that make our brain light up. It uh, It's very easy to get caught up in your work, your family, in terms of the day-to-day tasks and not to be able to step back and look at things objectively and, and realize, or maybe I should say subjectively, and realize what makes you tick, what makes you feel at ease. And I think the biggest thing for people in a really general sense is slowing down and not feeling guilty about it. Because I know for myself, like if I slow down, say on a Sunday afternoon and decide to take a 20 minute nap, for some reason, there's some guilt there. And 
It's just becoming aware and letting herself off the hook and realizing we're doing this for us and for our health and we should not feel guilty. We just really need to slow down in today's 21st century go, go, go world and do things that are going to activate our parasympathetic system and just get that rest and digest going and just put us in that relaxing state. Yeah, getting away from that guilt and stripping yourself away from your day to go and do something for you can be really hard to wrap your head around because you might think, okay, well, I'm not going to be productive if I go for a walk outside or if I go and listen to this five-minute meditation. Like, shouldn't I be doing this instead? It's it's very, very difficult. And I know that even for me, I'm working really hard on this. And you just got to build it in. You got to build the routine in. So right now in the mornings, I now have part of my morning routine is I take Goji on a very early morning walk. It's a winter wonderland on the trail behind us. And we just go and I take about a half an hour, 45 minutes. I'm totally immersed in that moment with her. I'm getting the benefit. She's getting the benefit. She's off leash, having a ball, running around. I'm just breathing fresh air, walking in nature, which is a goal of mine for the new year to do that more often. And I'm enjoying it. And it's great. And I don't have to be anywhere else. And the world has barely woken up yet. It's, it's super early in the morning. So that's something for me that uh, I have recently incorporated into my routine. And I'm absolutely loving it. So some other things you can do to get in a great state of mental health and well-being are stopping to take a number of deep breaths. So you can do this wherever you're at during the day. And make sure you're really breathing slow and deep into your belly. Take five to 10 breaths, and that's just going to do a reset on your system, and you're going to feel fantastic. You can even have a vacation planned. This is a great way to have something to look forward to if you and your partner plan even just a simple little date night. I mean, it doesn't have to be a big thing where you're like going down south and and spending a week. Those are nice, but maybe it's just on a Saturday night coming up, you and your partner have a plan to go out for dinner and go to the movies and, and just knowing that's up and coming. And when that happens, you're taking that evening off to rest and replenish with your loved one. Just some different ideas for you. And journaling and expressing your thoughts is a really good one as well. So the five-minute journal and Katie Delabout also talks about journaling and, and how awesome that is. So, you know, you should go back and definitely listen to UJ Ramdas, who is the creator of Five Minute Journal and Katie Delabout. But just finding a way to unleash and unload your thoughts, whether it's digitally on your phone or on a good old-fashioned legal paper pad or a beautiful journal, whatever works for you. Getting those thoughts down, really important and something that you can start to just do five to 10 minutes a day, just jotting down some notes. And the last one I'm going to mention here is a great way to help with your mental health and well-being is to do what you love in the world. So find what you're passionate about. And this doesn't have to be what you're doing as a career. Hopefully, maybe you can find a way down the line to make it what you do for a living. But maybe it's just something you spend an hour in the evenings doing, something that fills you up, something where you're giving back and and doing something for the world, something you love is just going to help you in such a profound way. And I don't think we can leave this category without talking about minimizing or minimalizing, shall I say, as uh, spoken by Ryan Nicodermis recently on our podcast, who's really inspired me to really start decluttering. The amount of space in your mind that is freed up when you declutter and take things out of your physical life makes such a difference. And I've always known that because I've always been one to collect. I'm not a hoarder. I just like things and I've always had multiple things (laughs) and I don't need all these things, whether it's clothing or just stuff or chachkas, as my mom would say, that uh, just hang out and hang around my home. When you start taking these things out, and you just see space, you like physically actually see space. It's like, oh, I don't need that whole counter filled up. You realize what that does to your mind. You sleep better, you feel better, you feel lighter throughout the day. So this is something really new for me. I know Jesse's always been a fan of this. He has always been a minimalist at heart. Uh, He's always, this guy could survive off of one pair of pants, one top, and probably no shoes, no jacket. He'd be good. That's it. So he's always been my inspiration in that that realm. So working hard on this, again, another goal of 2017 for me is the art 
of Living With Less. So definitely go listen to Ryan. And another inspiring episode that we just had was with James Altucher. So he he has a lot to say about this too. And it's really changing my frame of mind. Okay, moving into our last category, which is community and social. So to kick things off here, I really think it's so important. And again, this ties back to a point I just made about getting some time with your partner, say a date night on a Saturday or whatever it is. But spending quality time with your partner if you have one, or this can be a family member, it can be friends, anybody you love, really just surrounding yourself with quality people in a general sense is just so important for your health. And similar to decluttering the things in your life, you can also start to declutter the people in your life. And that might sound a little bit harsh, but Chessie and I recently have been a big fan of spending quality time with closer people to us and you know even re- if it means reconnecting with people who have had value in our lives and just really making those friendships or those relationships a priority because having so much going on all the time being so busy you really need to sometimes dedicate and focus your time and you want to do it with the people who inspire you uplift you make you feel good so it's not about having thousands of people in your life to connect with it's about having you know, maybe depending on how many, you know, we're very grateful to have wonderful friends, wonderful family. So it's a bit of a balancing act for us to get around to everyone. But we are trying to really focus our attention on these people and make them a priority and spend some good quality time with them. Yeah, there's a really popular saying out there where you become the five people you spend the most time with. And I really think at the core of that, there is so much truth. Whoever you are surrounding yourself with, you are going to tend to pick up things off of what they're doing and elevate your game accordingly. And it's just so important that we're taking time and assessing and spending time with the people that really are doing great things and people we want to emulate. And if you don't have people super close to you that are you know, on board with where you're at or what you're getting into or maybe with your your health and your lifestyle. There's so many ways to connect with communities and people through social media or different platforms and, you know, join groups of people that are on the same page as you. So there's ways to connect beyond your immediate circle that can have profound difference on your health. And this is another way to inspire yourself. So even if they're not your five closest friends, they can be other people who may not be so close to you that would still inspire you. Like our community group on Facebook, we're big fans of of having as many people join that group as possible because we're creating this space where people have a common goal of living better, taking their health to the next level, and just talking about good things. So this is a really nice supportive environment. There might be other things in your life that you're really into, whether it's art or motorcycles or whatever it might be that you may want to connect with those people. So find those social circles that will make an impact on your health, on your physical, mental, and overall well-being. And say you have people in your life, family or friends that have been around for a long time, and you really feel like they're not supporting and you're just not gelling with them, you don't necessarily have to cut them out of your life completely. A good thing you might want to do is Just find some common ground. Maybe the two of you really like movies and you can once a month have an ongoing movie date where you go and have a tea beforehand, go to the movies together, and you can just really connect on that level with that person. So I want to throw that out there because, again, it can seem kind of harsh when you talk about pruning these people from your life that just don't fit your current paradigm. So there are ways to keep them in there and find some common ground. Yeah, and it has to feel natural. You never want to force a relationship. You always want to feel like you can be your best self, which is sometimes challenging. You know, sometimes we all know that we all wear so many hats with the different people in our lives. So you'll know, you're your own barometer. You'll know how you feel around certain people based on how you are showing up and how you are being. And this is something I've really taken note of over the last couple of years is who are the people that make me feel the most like Marnie? Where can I be the most like Marnie? And and those are the people that I want to spend the most time with. Yeah, you want to make sure these people support you, challenge you, especially when it comes to a partner. You definitely want someone that's going to challenge you and, and push you to continue to grow and just give you that constant support as you're continuing your evolution. Yeah, and I think that's something that's been so beautiful about our relationship, Jess, is that like we've really pushed each other in different areas. We're very alike 
on so many levels. Our core values, our vision for the things we want and how we want to live is the same, but we have our nuances that make us unique. And you've definitely pushed me in certain ways. I know I've pushed you in other ways. And sometimes that's challenging because sometimes it can push your buttons and take you out of your comfort zone. But ultimately, you know that when there's someone kind of standing in your way that kind of pushes you in the opposite direction of what way you might have gone, it's really enlightening to see what's on the other side of that. So as Jesse said, whether it's you're fortunate enough to have a partner that's like that or a best friend, maybe it's a mother or a sister. I've always wanted a sister. So cheers to the sisters out there, you know, or a sibling that can really, uh, you know, do that for you. It's really, really important. So find those people in your life and cherish them. And in today's world, it is so easy to connect in the online world. And that is so important too. But make sure you're also getting out of the house. And for us, I can relate in the health world where there's all kinds of great health events. And Marnie and I love going to these and connecting with our listeners, connecting with other leaders in the health world. And I just want to make sure people are also getting out there and connecting with people face to face because in today's world, it is so easy to just stay behind the computer or smartphone. And there are different... uh, levels of connection and some of them you definitely need to go out there and and look somebody in the eye and connect face to face. This probably could be a four hour episode. There's so much to talk about. There's so much we want to share, so much we want to say, but we thought that this was a really good way to kind of recap, re-go over episode number two, our six pillars of health and kind of take them a little bit further and hopefully give you guys some new insights, new inspiration and we're really excited to to continue this conversation throughout the year. We have so many amazing guests, you know, filling in some of the holes again on some of these categories. And we can't wait to dive deeper into these subjects and and really transform your health. That's what we're here for. Yeah, this was a lot of fun to do. And maybe it'll have to be a regular thing every year or two. We come back and, and update you guys on where we're at with the six pillars We'll have to see how our evolution continues, but I have a hunch it's going to continue to evolve throughout our lifetime. So yeah, it was fun to go back and and listen to that old episode and just see our growth over that couple of years. And just great to share with you guys. We love to share this information and the community has grown in such a profound way in the last two and I think it's been maybe two years and a few months since we've been doing this show. And yeah, we're just having a blast. We don't see any end in sight. And we just want to thank you guys for listening and and supporting us during this journey. And we just wish you all the best in 2017. And uh, cheers to happiness and good health. And, and we really appreciate each and every one of you guys. So this gives you guys a really good overview. And if you've been following along in our Facebook group at ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash community or on Instagram at Ultimate Health Podcast. And maybe you also joined the Ultimate Health Transformation that I just recently took everyone through. And now I am offering Ultimate Health Coaching. So the six pillars is one of the coaching programs that I'm offering where I am willing to work with people individually or in groups and take you through six weeks of really digging deep into these areas and I'm so excited to be working with you on this and we can get really personal this show just gives you a bit of an overview but I really want to know what your situation's like how can I help you transform these different pillars to make them a little bit easier to approach so you have a good understanding a good grasp what's available to you where you live how can you get the support that you need and how can you start ultimately living better so if you are interested in working with me i know i'm interested in working with you i've been loving the response so far it's been fabulous so i i do have room for a few more people i was going to limit it to just a few and i'm going to take on a few more for the new year so just make sure that you email me at contact at ultimatehealthpodcast.com and just title the email six pillars and even if you are interested and i don't have room for you just yet i will get back to you and chances are i'll be able to take you on in a couple of months so connect with me i'm excited to transform your health and keep this going all year long. What a fantastic opportunity for a handful of people to work one-on-one with Marnie or again, a small group. We'll have to see how it pans out, but hopefully you guys take advantage of this and it's perfect timing with the new year. Kick off 2017 the right way. I'm sure you're going to get a ton out of this relationship with Marnie. So wishing you guys all the best again. 
a happy, healthy year. And we'll be talking to you soon. Take care. Take care, guys. Have an awesome beginning to the new year.